Big announcement, she said yes, here 12 years ago. Well, actually it was at the McDonald's down. I'll tell you this story. And I have thoughts on marriage and advice specifically for you, but it all starts back here 12 years ago. I was 22 years old and I'd fucked one girl and it just so happened that this one girl was the perfect girl and I decided to marry her. And so I brought her over here to Long Beach Seafood in Singapore on the East Coast. Beautiful, I've been here so many times with my family. Great pepper crab. And this is gonna be it. I was gonna fucking propose. I'd known her for one year, never dated before, but I knew she was the one. Especially because we'd already fucked and you know, I can't like not make her my wife because that would be just a dick move. I have to make an honest woman of this beautiful little fucking lady. Tim Urban, blue box time. I was a complete loser. To give you an idea of this, I forgot to bring my credit card and I didn't have enough cash to pay, which luckily I realized before we actually ordered, so we had to walk down the beach to find an ATM. So you're probably starting to get an idea about my value on the mate market at that time. So me and the one walked this way. And in the 12 years since then, I have done a lot more thinking about marriage than I did before I got married. And I discovered there are different theories about why marriage evolved as a social institution because, you know, butterflies don't get married, birds don't get married, chimpanzees don't get married, but homo sapiens, we do get married. And our common ancestor with chimpanzees probably didn't. So somewhere along that line, marriage evolved and was useful because 99% of things that evolve are useful. There are some traits that hitch along with traits that are actually useful and they just sort of go along for the ride. But marriage is near universal, so it must have had some benefit for sure, right? And the theory that makes the most sense for me is that marriage came from property. Because back in the day when we were hunter-gatherers, property was basically shared and there wasn't a lot of property because you had to pick everything up and carry it like in shitty, shitty, shitty baskets to the next campsite, right? So you couldn't have a lot of shit. Bowls, hand axes, that kind of shit was basically communal and everybody just sort of picked it up together and they go along. Then agriculture. And we're getting close to the McDonald's where the proposal happened. I will tell you about that. Hold on. So back to agriculture. Once you got people settling and be like, this is my fucking land and I sow this and I re Keep it and this is my shit, people started to get surpluses. And then once you got resources, maybe a guy's got like a kick-ass hand axe or like a really good hoe, not a girl, like a ho-ho, then it makes sense for you to pass that shit on to your genetic hair, right? A guy who didn't do that and a guy who did, competing genetically, the guy who did pass on his shit and helped out his sons and daughters and grandchildren more, that guy's genes are gonna proliferate more. So that behavior of like, hey, I wanted to give the good shit to my kids, that behavior would become the new norm. So you got these farmer guys who have this special you know, hoe, this brass hoe that he wants to pass on to his kids. How does he know who his kids are? Now a problem arises that had never arisen before, which is paternity uncertainty. That means, does a guy know for certain that that kid is actually his kid? Now the DNA tests are becoming a lot easier and cheaper to administer. We're actually finding out that about 10 to 15% of kids are not from the fathers that the wives are saying they're from. All right, now this right here used to be McDonald's and it had the only ATM around here. Right now that's kind of unthinkable, but back in 2006, this was actually the only one. So we walked here, we put in my ATM card, it didn't work, but I had a ring burning a hole in my pocket. So I'm like, well, let's just fucking do this. Let's go to McDonald's. This again, made value. I was a fucking idiot. And it was almost exactly 12 years ago because I remember the World Cup was on. There were people there watching it and they had these like rice patty burgers where instead of uh, bread, it was like a rice thing. So we got two of those takeaway and we walked down here to the water. So romantic, McDonald's. <laughs> But let's get back to the history of why I was standing on the beach with the one with the intention of marrying her. So suddenly these farmers want paternity certainty. They wanna know that their kids are fucking their kids because if you're gonna give your magic golden brass hoe to your kid, better be your fucking kid. So marriage came about, which meant sexual exclusivity. Beautiful, wonderful, except it was only for the girl because the guys at the top of society with the most beautiful brass hoes to pass on to their little kids they also had a lot of beautiful young women hoes with which they were making little kids. And all marriage was, was bitch, don't fuck anybody else. That was the beautiful sentiment which birthed marriage. So I was looking for the spot where it actually happened. It was totally right there, I remember it. Like right where the grass meets the, uh, the sand. And up until maybe 100 years ago, marriage was really about the girl not fucking anybody else and the guy providing resources to the kids who popped out who he was sure were his kids. So to make it super clear, the value exchange that's going on is the girl's gonna say, I'm only gonna fuck you. The things that pop out of my veg, the babies that pop out of my veg will be yours. The man knows that all the resources he contributes to those kids and to the girl 
are like resources well spent and well invested. And he's gonna get a good ROI genetically for those resources. Agriculture and the advent of property gave rise to income inequality. So it turned out that there was, you know, the 80-20 principle. There was 20% of guys who had 80% of the resources. And for those 20% of guys, why wouldn't they take 80% of the girls? They got the resources to like feed them and provide for them. However, it's super, super societally unstable. Because what about those 80% of guys? Horny, young, pussyless men get fucking pissed off and they start killing people. So a society that only has polygamy going on, only has that one top guy fucking everybody, it's not gonna last long. The group that evolves a little bit more of an equitable distribution of the females in the population to the guys, that society is gonna last longer because it's not gonna just fall apart. So marriage is a way for that bottom 80% of guys who I was 100% in when I was 22 sitting here. It's a way for those guys to get laid. Maybe not immediately, but they know, you know, in a little while I get some resources together, this marriage thing, I can at least tie down some girl. At least some girl will fuck me. At least one girl. And that was exactly what was going through my mind when I was sitting right over here. I was like, I am so low value. I just don't know what the fuck I'm doing with women. I better pin this girl down now. She wasn't perfect. She was a bit of a fixer upper. I was like, this is the best I'm gonna get. Let's go, let's do this. Let's put the fucking ring on. So with McDonald's in my belly, I got down on my knee and I proposed. And I want you to take a guess right now, how long this marriage lasted? I'm not married now, we got divorced. I was 22, she was 20. I fucked one girl my entire life, I dated one girl my entire life, and she was a little kooky. How long did it last? You ready? Three years of hell. <laughs> It was not good. And that brings us to my second thought on marriage, which is it corrupts a relationship unnecessarily. Think about the last job you had. Did you maybe spend a little bit more time getting your hair just right for the interview than after six months into the job? And you probably didn't fuss quite as much about your appearance and you probably weren't quite as chipper and enthusiastic and yes, sir, I'm so enthusiastic. Because once you've signed the deal, the tendency is to just sort of give the minimum. Now that's not for everybody. Some people work fucking hard in jobs, but most people from their interview to six months later, they are not quite as energetic. But then contrast that with like a freelancer or a contractor who knows after every, say, week, he could easily be replaced. That person is one, not able to oversell because it will quickly be discovered and they'll be discarded. And two, they gotta keep greasing the gears. They gotta keep, you know, making the person happy. They can't just sit back on their laurels. They can't, what the fuck is a laurel? And those are the perverse incentives of marriage. Once a relationship is locked in and it's fucking hard to get out of, both sides are like, well, I'll just do the minimum. And the flowers start to go away and the special dates start to go away and the sweetness of the relationship starts to go away. Not to mention the blowjobs. The blowjobs, no, 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 no. No, 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 those are gone. And that's exactly what happened from the moment that I got down on my knee until we finally got divorced because she got me fired from my job and she slept with another guy like all within about two weeks. And I posted this meme on my Instagram stories. This is fucking hilarious, take a look. When he doesn't cheat on you, loves you unconditionally, pays all your bills and treats you like a princess. Like all humor, that's funny because you know it's fucking true. And you know I've thought a lot about getting into that relationship and really learning a lot about relationships so quickly in my early 20s. And I think it was one of the best things that's ever happened because I had all the mainstream beliefs about marriage in my head and very, very deeply buried in my head. They were not going anywhere. And it took something as drastic and traumatic as living with somebody for three years who's abusive emotionally and physically and then getting my whole life turned upside down by being fired. It took that entire situation to slap me out of the trajectory of just, you know, marriage is great, I'm just gonna get married. If she was a little less crazy, I would have all kinds of little babies and I would be a fat chode. But fate had another idea for me. So after getting kicked in my face by the reality of how bad marriage can really be, I was like, wait, wait, what the fuck is going on here? And I started to really reevaluate the assumptions that I'd based all this shit on. And after three years of just trying to run away from my problems by starting a fucking farm in the jungle of Borneo, Saba, near Keningau, if you wanna know, I was like, nah, I just need to fix this shit. I need to become higher value. And that's what I focused on since then. So my health, my communication skills, my education, my understanding of female psychology, my understanding of general economics and how the world works, my appearance, my charisma, my mindset, all of this stuff I started to try to improve. And surprise, surprise, actually it might be a surprise for you if you're deep into this Disney shit, I'm actually able to attract much higher quality women now 
than I ever could even like eight, nine years ago. For example, this last weekend, I joined a pickup training course. So we went out Friday night and Saturday night because I'm always trying to keep up my education around these things that actually contribute to mate value. So here in Singapore, we went out to one altitude both nights. First night I slept with a girl who was 20 and pretty cute. And the next night I slept with a 21 year old flight attendant, also pretty cute. Now I am 34. If you had taken like my 25 year old self and thrown him into that situation, I would have basically shat my pants. So after being disillusioned about marriage, the basic trajectory of my life has been more personal development and more mate value. And the results are crazy. Like when I was sitting over here proposing to that girl, I thought that would be the last time I would ever, ever, ever possibly have a chance to sleep with anybody who was like 20. And it happened three nights ago. So if you're a guy and you have scarcity in your choice of women. You can't get the girls that you want. And you're honest with yourself about that shit because everybody rationalizes that the girl they have is the girl they want. That's not fucking true. You're honest with yourself and you're like, there is a disconnect between what I want and what I can get. I want you to trust in the process of personal development. Trust in mate value. If you commit to the process and you are methodical and strategic and you work hard, you can get very, very high quality girls. So instead of settling, yes you are fucking settling, instead of settling for that girl who's just around and easy and the best that you think you can get right now, instead of just roping her in and going for it, I want you to think, what could you get if you invested in yourself? And to give you an idea of what's actually possible, because I used to be a fuck up. I used to be a fuck up. And to fucking give you a wake up call, to slap you out of your complacency, to jab you in the goddamn ribs, what I'm looking for in relationships now with the value that I've cultivated over the last almost decade, the relationship structure I want is a primary girlfriend long-term if she sticks around because I like her, and then multiple short-term sexual partners. Those are gonna be like young, hot girls that I just wanna fuck. That's what I'm realistically trying to construct in my life. From fuck up to that, wherever you are on the spectrum, what the fuck are you doing? As I was reminded this weekend in the coaching session, I was like, well, what happens? You know, I got these goals, but what happens on a Tuesday afternoon after lunch? When I'm like, I just don't wanna really do anything. And the coach was like, that's wonderful. I just love it when I hear good looking, intelligent guys who on a Tuesday afternoon just don't wanna do anything. And they kinda wanna slack off a little bit. That's great because I'm gonna find the girl who would be the best fit for you possible, then you won't be able to get her, and I'm gonna take her, and I'm gonna fuck her, and I'm gonna come in her eye, or maybe her left nostril, and uh, who else, like, where would you like to fuck her? Where, oh, okay, on her belly, and on her tits, right? We're all gonna fuck her, we're gonna gangbang her. And that's what's at stake, bitches. The girl who would make you very, very happy for all kinds of reasons is out there, but only if you can get her. So remember that, when you're like, nah, I'm not gonna go to the gym, nah, I'm not gonna try to make a sufficient amount of money, nah, I'm not gonna look better, nah, I'm not gonna figure out how social situations work, how charisma works, how sex works, I'm not gonna just, you know, I, I'm kinda, Game of Thrones is on. Well, fuck you, you ain't gonna get shit. And at least you'll have the fucking fantasy that the shit you got is great, cool, enjoy that. While somebody else is fucking that girl and coming all over her eye. If I was watching this 12 years ago, I would not listen to a fucking word. But it's a spectrum and some of you are on the fence and this will connect. So listen up, marriage is for the bottom 80% of men. If you wanna be in the bottom 80% and you want the bottom 80% results, by all means, get married, have a fucking mediocre life, mediocre results, easy, simple, except for the fucking relationship. That's not gonna be easy, that's gonna get toxic, but you'll at least know that you're part of the herd, you're part of the masses, right? You're a nice little fucking sheep and you can snuggle up all next to your other miserable fucking sheep and you can be like, yeah, marriage is so good. Marriage is great. That's your consolation prize, bitching to people like me. I'm actually a very emotional person and I like the intimacy that you get from somebody who you see over and over and over. But if it gets fucked up, I don't wanna be with that person. I don't want them to be with me. I want us to split. If it makes sense, we'll stay together a long time. If it doesn't, we'll fucking break up. Marriage doesn't have to be a part of it. God and the government don't have to be a part of it. So 12 years after she said yes, I'm actually really glad that she did. I'm grateful for that. That was one of the best things that happened because it showed me that there are so much richer and more fulfilling and just better options than marriage. So I took that slap in the face, that three years just grinding my fucking face into the pavement for me to finally wake up to the reality of relationships. And then it took three years of me fucking off in the jungle trying to get away from my problems before I decided to take action and improve myself. And look, I don't know where you are personally. These words might just bounce right the fuck off of you, but I hope they don't. So if you want better results, better quality women, better quality relationships where the incentives aren't fucked, then one, wake up. 
two, take action or fucking don't. But if you don't, you will get shit and just be happy with your shit. And if you wanna take a concrete step in the direction of getting better sexually so that if you meet a girl, you can actually retain her, you give her a good sexual experience, regardless of your experience, regardless of your dick size, regardless of your stamina. Then I have a course called Six Step Squirting. Go to hunkans.com and it's right there. Check that out if you're willing to take some steps, to put in some effort, some investments, to actually make a difference and get better results.